Okay, here today we're going to talk about the binomial theorem. So what do we know about the binomial theorem there, Phil? Well, binomial is a, a big hint because you've got the word bi in there, so you have two terms. And uh, binomial theorem is going to be talking about the algebraic expansions of two terms in brackets raised to some power. So uh, I believe it was Pascal who, well, who knows if it was only him, but uh, he gets credit for uh, coming up with a lot of these patterns. If we look on the left-hand side here, do you want to point out some of the key features when we start to expand to the power of 0, 1, and 2? All right, so if we look at the kind of expand and out kind of thing, we can see that a to the power a plus b to the power 1 is just simply a plus b. If we go to the power 2, we all know it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Those are just, just gimmies. But if we go over here to the triangle, you'll notice that these 1s and 1s are found here and here in a and b. The coefficients of a and b. Right, and so at 1, 2, and 1 is found in the coefficients here, 1, 2, 1. So if we look at this pattern, if we go on to the next term, a plus 3 cubed. A plus b cubed? Yep. And so if we're going to go a plus b times a plus b squared, well, we already knew what that was down here from the previous term. We multiply it out, expand it, collect like terms, and we get a cubed, a 3 plus a, plus 3 plus a squared. Did I, I didn't say that right. Plus <laughs> yeah, plus 3a squared, squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. And here, what you're, there's a whole bunch of things that, that are noticed. And mathematicians, we love looking for patterns and trying to generalize. We hate doing things a long way. I mean, once you get up to here, a plus b cubed, mm -hmm. you can see the coefficients 1, 3, 3, and 1 are the terms in the Pascal's triangle. So what's going to happen? Well, let's, let's talk about some more things here. I would say um, look at the power of a plus b to the 0, and how many terms do you have? Just one term there. And if you have a plus b to the 1, you have? Two terms. And a plus b squared? It's three terms. OK, so in general, how many terms are you going to have if you have a plus b to the power of n? It's going to be one more than the n, so n plus 1. Excellent. OK, so if we're looking at n equals 4, we should expect to have five terms when we're doing this one. Exactly. And looking for the values that these coefficients are going to be, well, let's go to this triangle because we love patterns kind of thing. And we can see that going down this tree, it's 1 all the time. And then that 3 can come together from these added. That 3 can come from these added, and the 1 just comes down. So if we continue the pattern, this will be 1. Add those together, you get 4. Add those, you get 6. Add those, you get four again and one and so there's our five terms and it's going to be to the power this should be when n equals four so if we use this pascal's triangle we should be able to say that the term a plus b to the power all to the power four will be a to the fourth plus four a cubed b plus six a squared b squared plus four a b cubed plus b to the fourth. Now, Phil, how did I get these patterns for the coefficient or for the variables a and b and the squares and stuff? What's going on here? The power is good. So we explained well how the coefficients work. Now let's look at some other patterns. Let's look at uh, the a's as we go. So first, to the power of zero, you have no a's, and then to the power of one, you have a to the one. To the power of two you have a squared, and then the next term has an a, okay? Mm, yep. So those powers are decreasing, starting with the highest one. So on the a plus b cubed, you can really see, you start with a cubed, and then you have an a squared term, and an a, and then no a term. No a term. So at the a plus b to the power of four, you have a to the fourth, a cubed, a squared, a, and then no a term. And the b's do the exact opposite. So they start with b to the 0, b to the 1, b to the 2, b to the 3, and b to the 4. So they're ascending. So we've got how many things now? Four different things that key things to point out. The power, right. is, or the number of terms, is one more than the power of yeah, the binomial. Right. The first term starts with the power and decreases by one each time. 
The second term starts to the power of zero and increases by one each time, and the coefficients can be generated from Pascal's triangle. Okay. All right, let's consider what's going on over here. Let's use an example now to do Pascal's triangle to expand to a plus b to the power of five. Well, if we use the triangle from before, we're going to need the pattern. So if we're going to look at this, we're going to have to make the next row. So we're going to get 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1 from the pattern. So we're going to take those coefficients and use them over to expand this scenario here. Okay. And so, so, so go ahead there, there, Phil. Yeah, I was just going to say um, maybe make a note. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Oh. Excellent. So there's our fifth row from the Pascal's triangle. Six terms. So now if we're going to expand it, well, we're going to use these coefficients. We're going to take A and descend by one each time, and B and ascend by one each time. So we'll start off with A to the power of 5 plus 5A to the fourth, B to the 1 plus 10A cubed, B squared plus 10 a squared b cubed plus 5 a b to the fourth plus my last term will be b to the fifth and a to the zero we don't even write excellent so that's pretty uh, that's pretty nice and and you can really see the power in, in generalizing and, and seeing patterns like this um, this obviously is is uh, starting at the easiest example and we'll get into some heavier ones but uh, just really concentrate on that and you can solve everything. Now next, let's have a look at, at the triangle and you can really see how these numbers get large quite quickly. Right. So if I wanted to do uh, a plus b to the power of 10, I'd have to do all these things. I'd have to generate the whole triangle to get there. If I want to do 8 to the 11th, I could generate all the here. Imagine going to 8 to the 99th. Uh, so a plus b to the 99th would be a lot of rows of triangle. There's got to be a simpler way. Let's explore that idea a little bit. Let's consider here. So we know that here's Pascal's triangle that we've just been looking at. And so when n is 1, we got 1, 1. n is 2, we got 1, 2, 1. Now that happens to correspond to combinations that you've been studying in the past. 1 is 0, 2, 0. 1, this one is going to be 1, 2, 0. 1, 2, 1. When n is 2, we can go to this row here and slowly ascend on the bottom. In the top, or for the next row, we get 3 and so on. So if I'm going to do n choose 4, or n equals 4, then it's simply the pattern is going to continue to be 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, and 4 choose so this can be very powerful if you're doing an expansion to the power of 11 or something and you need the, I don't know, let's say you're after the eighth term. So rather than generate the whole triangle, which is efficient, much more efficient than expanding, but we have even a better way now with the bringing in our knowledge of combinations. So combinations connects to Pascal's triangle and that helps us find any term that we are interested in. Okay. So putting it all together, here's our general form of the binomial theorem. We have a plus b to the power n, n choose 0, a to the n, n choose 1, a to the n minus 1 plus, times b, all the way, continuing the pattern of descending a powers, ascending b powers. That's right. So the point that you will, the part of this formula that you will use the most is the n choose r part. This part here. That's what they ask a, a lot about. Now, every once in a while, you do have to do a whole expansion, but for the most part, they're going to be interested in, in, uh, in some aspect of an expansion.